Pete and Bear here. Uh, originally today was going to be like a, like a gameplay video thing, uh, but then then I realized the internet was too slow to like reliably play video games and talk. Uh, so I just decided to uh, voice over a bunch of clips of like the good internet. Today I'm going to be doing uh, Northwind Combat tips. So these are like things that will help you at Northwind Combat. Uh, they might seem basic, but if you combine them, uh, you can get a lot better than the average Northwinder. Like the average Northwinder that plays the game, not the average Northwinder who probably doesn't even create a character. One is going to be uh, gear, because uh, you're going to need equipment, uh, otherwise you can't really fight. And there's a lot of different equipment, and a lot's better than others. And then some is like really expensive, uh, so you're probably going to be like uh, not getting the top tier equipment. Like uh, that's just basically impossible. So starting off, like uh, depending on what equipment you have, you're going to want to play differently. So you have to take that into account when buying your equipment. Like for example, if you use a boarding axe or a tribal war axe, uh, you're going to get some extra damage per hit to a two hit, whereas you'll you'll basically have no stamina left after one kill uh, unless you're in fortress mode, which is just crouching and swinging, at which point you, you could regenerate a fourth hit or a third hit, depending on if you're a colonist or a native. Those are the boarding axes and war axes, and then there's also like uh, cutlasses, sabers, uh, there's no really native equivalent to these, but uh, they're, they're swords, uh, they hit a lot faster, so it's a lot harder to block them. Uh, but on the downside of being harder to block, uh, they're also a lot, a lot less influential when they, your enemy doesn't block. Uh, you have to three tap with these, so it's it's notably worse uh, in that regard. But it also hits a lot faster and takes up less stamina. So if you're trying hit and run tactics and you don't need as much range, the swords are an okay option. And then uh, there's the main problem with like. Uh, the expensive swords like Dragoon Swords and Masterwork, which they still have a higher DPS, uh, which is that makes them better for CQB in some scenarios if the user is skilled enough, uh, but they don't swing, so that means that you can't, one side will thrust and the other side will swing, so if you thrust, you have to be a lot more on top of your aim than with a swing. On the plus side, thrusts are like almost impossible to remember how to block, so Yay, unless your person has explicitly trained to block those, uh, you might have a higher chance of hitting them. Alright, so so that's uh, gear. There's also uh, shotguns, bows, and guns. I'm not going to get too much into these because it's like a really big topic. But basically your bows uh, will have higher DPS, uh, but you'll have to be exposed a lot more. Uh, and natives will have an advantage with those, whereas guns... Uh, you don't have to be exposed as much, but they have a lower DPS, and they have to be reloaded all at once. Uh, you can't reload them one at a time, so they're also really bad for hit-and-run tactics. Uh, but they have a lot more range, uh, plus shotguns. Uh, that would be like the Doppelit and the Blunderbuss. Uh, just don't use the Doppelit, uh, but if you have the Blunderbuss, uh, its main thing is it trades off range for, it trades off range for damage. Uh, so you get higher damage close up, but less range far away, so that's good for CQB, uh, be warned. Guns are known to fail at close range, though the more bullets you have, like a blunderbuss or an espingole, uh, the better useful at a close quarters it will be. Alright, next up is training. You're going to need to train with the gear you use, or else you're going to be about as good as that new guy with the hunting bow and the knife. Uh, so start training, uh, just use it in combat, Puvial is a good place because you can't lose any of your equipment there, uh, and you can also respawn a lot, and there's a lot of people fighting, uh, there's almost always fights going on somewhere on Puvial. Okay, so another part of training is going to be uh, fighting multiple people, uh, it's, yeah, you, in a duel you're never going to have to fight multiple people, uh, but in realistic combat, like you're going outside of uh, safe zone, they're probably only going to travel in like groups of two, uh, or you're going to get really lucky and hit hit a group of one. So uh, get good at like fighting multiple people, even if you don't win, you, you still survive. As in like uh, like more of a manhunt style where you escape them using water and all those things. Because uh, then on these winter islands. Uh, as long as you don't stay in the water too long, you should be able to escape them and keep your gear. Uh, then next up is going to be supplies. That's bands, ammo, arrows, uh, whatever thing you're using. Uh, so I'll, uh, the first half is going to be about colonist supplies, so that's just bands and ammo. 
Uh, there's really no other colonist supplies. I guess bedrolls could be one, but uh, you want fans and ammo. Uh, that that allows you to heal and shoot. You still want extra space to be able to loot extra gear if you get any in a an outside of uvial fight. It doesn't matter too much if you have too much extra space. So the the main thing is that you can lose all the stuff you have that's not in munition pouches. Uh, so watch out for that. Uh, then for natives, that's arrows. You have to worry less about this. Because there's trees everywhere, so as long as you train with wooden arrows, uh, you'll be good. Uh, really just try training harder than you fight with like your graphics on a higher setting than usual, so it lags more uh, with wooden arrows instead of metal arrows or whatever you use in normal combat and stuff like that so that you get better tactics. Uh, we already got on this a little bit, but uh, it highly depends. Like in Bubiel, a lot of the fights are closer in houses. Uh, where melee is much stronger uh, so are you going to use melee farther out uh, like when you're on when you're on big islands it's like a pressure tool as in you get closer to them and force them away because uh, there's a lot more open ground to cover on these big islands uh, with the exception of mountain combat uh, then it can be a little different uh, whereas on Bewfield it's almost always just close quarters fighting in duels it's also close quarters fighting but you'll only ever fight one person so there's a lot of different tactics to be noted here. Uh, and then finally, friends. Numbers are very useful and very not useful at the same time. If you're doing a stealth mission, don't ever bring anyone else unless it's like only half stealth. Uh, and if you're doing a, uh, if you're gonna fight like a, a very experienced hit and runner, instead of having like uh, six friends that are all like random buffoons, uh, just get like three or two good people and chase them down. Uh, then there's also, uh, wait, I'm just realized I'm looking at the script and I spelled it frames. Yeah, I'm, I'm great at spelling. Uh, anyways, you're also going to want to account for when you have to fight multiple people, because uh, there's different, uh, like, uh, like a house uh, will affect it depending on how fortified it is. Uh, there's also specially designed combat houses uh, that are specially designed for combat. Uh, and like kill chambers, and then there's combat combat houses that are designed for more open fights. So it might be closer to fighting on a flat plane than it would be to fighting in a house, uh, depending on uh, what it's made of, of, what it's made out of, and what it's like. So then, uh, yeah, these different things will also account for different amounts of friends. Uh, the use of friends is more firepower. The downside of friends is more spotable, and you can't really sneak by their defenses at all because. You have double the chance of getting spotted, and if, if your friend isn't good at stealth, it's like probably closer to quadruple or quintuple, so watch out for that. Uh, uh, plus, there's also uh, friends. Uh, every friend you have is a friend you can't fight on Bewfield. Keep that in mind. All right, and then uh, finally, the last thing is going to be the weapons. Different weapons are effective against different amounts of people, like a blunderbuss, really great against one person really bad against three people, whereas a, uh, a, sh a rifle is going to have a lot more damage there, or a carbine is going to have like the best effect there, because it's all about quick drops with multiplayer combat, so it really just depends on what you're doing, uh, but keep these in mind when fighting, and you'll probably do better than most like random toddlers playing the game. I'm not sure if that's an achievement, but it, it's better than most random toddlers playing the game right now, so, you know, 